Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys uh, a rough outline of my Atlas tree progression for 3.19. Now before I get started, I do want to say that this is not necessarily something that you should follow. Um, I'm not trying to label this as like a guide that you should follow, but more so the way I would like to progress with my Atlas. Uh, I'm comfortable making my own Atlas because I'm able to make an educated decision on, you know, do I need more map drops? Let me go ahead and specialize over here, etc. Um, but with that being said, I want to go ahead and talk you guys through my thoughts more than anything. Um, before I get started, I have a like a 48 tree here and a 100 tree here. I'm not going to release like a super crazy end game tree, min max, whatever, because you know everything is scheduled or subject to change based off of what I want to farm, basically. So uh, let's get started. Right at the beginning, uh, when we first start. I am most likely going to go three points into uh, twice tempted for strong boxes. I personally enjoy monster density in strong boxes, and I feel that righteous fire with infernal cry is just very smooth at clearing strong boxes regardless, right? So I really, really like this. From here, I'm probably going to spend my first three points to come up here and grab uh, covert stakeouts. Um, this is basically just for Jun. Um, I'm a big fan of Jun in the early game for safe houses. Safe houses get me majority of my currency. Uh, Katarina gets me majority of my early currency. And in general, I just like unlocking all of my crafts with Betrayal so I don't have to worry about it ever again for the League. Um, at some point, I'm also going to go ahead and grab the Focused Investigation. I'm not sure. It really depends on how my RNG kind of goes with this, right? Uh, for people who don't know, I don't actually like run the safe houses the way they're supposed to i just literally spam safe houses to get my unveils with like chance at paradoxica drop and then eventually katarina which will be a little bit later so from here i'm going into one of my favorite mechanics in path of exile shrines i love shrines i'm addicted to them every atlas tree i ever have will have basically full shrines because it's just my favorite it makes the game so much more enjoyable for me uh, from here, I have a few options. You could be more efficient if you path like through here and grab Stream of Consciousness first, uh, but I'm just kind of lazy and don't really care. So from here, I'm basically probably going to come right over here and grab my Shaping the Skies. And then since I'm already right here, I think I'll just spend a point down here to block two. Normally, I don't really want to block early because blocking does not necessarily help you with map sustain, but I really, really, really want to try the new harvest the newest harvest with like the way everything kind of stacks with the life force it's just something i want to go out of my way for um so i'm most likely going to come here and block metamorph metamorph is going to be very dangerous with the new changes to rare mobs uh and i just don't really care for it i do want to get some catalyst but i'll wait on that uh also i don't really like blight it just takes a long time RF is not very good for Blight, especially without like the Maven boots and a little bit of gear. Although to be fair, Infernal Cry usually carries your Blight, but if you have really bad gear and you get like the four way where they come from four different directions at the same time, that can be really frustrating. I don't like failing things. So I remove those. Ritual is kind of interesting. I actually like Ritual in the early league. Usually like the first few days, uh, I like having Ritual. There's a lot of really cool things that kind of pop up in there that have a lot of value in the early league. And then once I, you know, once I'm in my map clear zoom zoom, I typically remove this, right? Uh, Delirium, it depends. If I'm able to handle my Delirium content, then I'm going to keep Delirium on. If I'm unable to handle the Delirium content, I will block it. So at this point here, um, I'm either A... By this point, I would have had a Harvest Pop, right? So if I like the new Harvest a lot, I'm going to specialize in this whole wheel right here. However, if, you know, um, Harvest is not as good as I thought initially, um, I'm probably going to come down here first and just grab this whole entire Syndicate wheel. Now, basically what this is doing is this is just giving me more items from Syndicate. Um, the more items from Syndicate are very good for me personally. I really enjoy the unveil. Well, I hate the aspect of unveiling, but I like the unveil mechanic. Uh, for example, if you were to say uh, get a couple of accessories like rings, you have a chance of unveiling and getting like minimum frenzy charge, frenzy charge on kill. That literally eliminates blood rage from my build that frees up an entire socket. That gives me, you know, the ability to put in another gem uh, and gives you like early game clear speed and damage. So I'm a huge Syndicate fan. I don't really know much about it, but like just the re even if you don't know Syndicate, unveiling is not a difficult concept, right? Unless you're unveiling stuff from Katarina. So Syndicate is something I always do, even in SSF, right? Huge fan here. Uh, from here, definitely going to go into Harvest since we already have the points here, right? So this is the extra life force. 
um, which is going to be the new mechanic from Harvest, basically, right, with the 4%. Um, I believe we already talked about getting this, so that's fine. Um, then, the other thing is, uh, we're probably... I don't know, right? Because stream of consciousness is, like, more important than grabbing the little 1%ers. So, again, realistically, you could, like, go grab stream of consciousness and then grab these and then respect this. But the early mapping is so fast. Like, you get so many points so quickly. So, I'm most likely just going to come over here and grab bumper crop for the extra harvest. Um, well, even though it's nerfed, it's still, I think, pretty good. Then I'm going to come up over here. And normally, we would not take bountiful harvest, but... 10% um, chance to spawn an additional monster makes me think that's just extra life force, right? So for now, I would I would take this, right? So take Bountiful Harvest and Stream of Consciousness. And all right, on to the next part. So the next part over here uh, is when we are moving upwards toward here. I tried doing a tree where I come over here for like test of loyalty, but you just spend like two to three extra points and I prefer the progression going this way versus this way because unless you are rushing tier 16 slash red tier maps um there's not really a reason to be at this stuff to my knowledge right so anyway coming over here we're gonna go up and right when you're here you make a couple of decisions hey is my map sustain bad am i struggling to get maps am i annoyed okay if yes come over here you may as well grab Commissioned Officer if you're already over here. Getting a 3% chance to get a Kirak mission is pretty good. Kirak missions can just have so many different things. They're typically like... The way I look at Kirak missions early, since you're not really investing into them with this like strategy, is if you get a Kirak mission, you probably gain an Atlas point, right? Like, for the most part. Um, then if you're already over here, because you're coming here for the maps, you're going to come up here and grab Shaping the Seas. Of course, if you want additional maps to stay, you just go into Shaping the Valley, right? So now we get to right here where we get to an interesting one, which is strong boxes. So tamper proof, which makes corrupted strong boxes is very nerfed this league as six links to a vendor no longer award a divine. Instead, it's 20 fuse, but I'm really lazy and I'm not going to roll every strong box. So I don't know. This one is really kind of up in the air. The reason I have strong boxes in the first place is because with the nerf to rare monsters, I think strong boxes might be OK now. I don't know if they adjusted the rare monsters that pop out of strong boxes. Of course, if strong boxes end up being unrewarding, I just literally spec out of them, spec out of them, and then eventually when we get up here, we'll spec out of them, right? It's not like I have to path out of my way for it. Um, so anyway, yep, moving forward. Secret operations will almost always stay. Um, it's, it's only five points to go like twice tempted in secret operations, which is really good. And that starts getting you uh, scarabs. Scarabs, I typically never sell my scarabs because I play Path of Exile for such a long time. And regardless, it's just annoying for me. But building up those scarabs is usually very nice because then I don't have to trade as much. So this is kind of just like a me preference thing, right? So from here, we are going up and across. And do you remember those shrines I was talking about? Yeah, we're taking all of them, right? So we get the chance for additional shrine uh, along with the shrines in your map green, a random additional shrine effect, which is awesome because you could literally start a map click a random shrine and bam you have an acceleration shrine and you're just zooming right zooming uh especially like um massive shrine right massive shrine gives you uh extra life that's extra clear speed because rf's base damage is scaled off your life so it's a little bit of extra damage not a lot but personally in the early game with rf any extra damage you get really really helps you uh really just helps speed up until you have gear so drawn to power is basically just chance for extra mobs you know, density is always good. Uh, moving up at the top here, assuming, you know, we really enjoy the harvest mechanic, we're going to go over and we're going to grab all of this, which is Heart of the Grove. Uh, I suspect Heart of the Grove will be good money because uh, they have a 10%, well, basically, so this has a 10% chance for it to unwilt or not wilt, so you can, like, you know, get double. Uh, but the harvest crops on your maps have an increased chance to contain a tier 4 plant. Tier 4 plants... Uh, drop those keys to fight Oshabi, and Oshabi drops the infused life force for the Giga Crafts. So I literally just look at this as like another way for currency. Even if you're not crafting that level of gear, it should hopefully, uh, I'm assuming it's tradable, right? Because regular life forces, um, this might be another way for us to generate income, which is pretty nice. Uh, moving up over here, we have the strong box section. Now, obviously, if you are not enjoying strong boxes, you're not going to invest into this wheel, right? Um, so this is basically just quantity. Of strong boxes this is the div card dupe uh div card dupe has always been really nice there's a lot of general divination cards right uh chances are like 
Well, not chances are, but personally, I've had a lot of success with div dupe along with currency dupe. Um, even though like, for example, like, okay, let's use an example. Actually with divines, you could drop a divine out of a strong box, dupe it, and you have two divines. It's very unlikely that that tier of currency drops from a strong box, but it is a potential that can happen. However, this also floods you with all just basic currency, right? So as a person who plays a lot of SSF, I love this for accumulating like my early currency tab. It just helps fill up all of the currency in there, right? So I don't have to trade for conversions and stuff. It's kind of just something that's really cozy for me, right? However, I'm probably not actually going to take this wheel right away. Uh, I also probably am not taking Heart of the Grove right away. Um, these I will definitely take right away because this increases my map clear. I think I am going to go up. And by the time I'm here, I'm probably skipping. Oh, actually, I don't know if I want all that glitters right away. These are just actual shrine nodes. All that glitters is chance for covetous shrine um, that has like extra. Basically, you have a uh, bonus rarity and quantity, I think, while it's on you. I have tested this so many times for me personally. And during the duration of all that glitters, I've never dropped anything unique, like special. However, rarity, right? Rarity, it says increases quantity, quantity and rarity. Rarity now increases uh, currency. Rarity did not affect currency before. I believe Chris Wilson spoke about how rarity now affects currency drops. So this actually might be worth it. Um, coming across over here, intelligence gathering is part of how I, this is actually how I get all my safe houses, right? As a guy who does not invest a lot of time into the betrayal league mechanic, basically for speed clearing maps, you gain intelligence. When you gain X amount of intelligence, you open a safe house. By running that safe house based off of the tier of your leader, you gain X amount of intelligence that intelligence uh, towards Katarina. When you have like 100%, then you can go run Katarina. You kill Katarina, she always drops one of her uniques. Her early game uniques can be worth a lot of money because they are build enabling for a lot of builds. Builds will seek these items so that they are ready to like start their character, right? So this always has a lot of wealth in it. And this is also very good for me because I want my 3% like flask unveil uh, regeneration. So anyway, that's pretty much my early mapping strategy. Again, everything is subject to change with time, uh, but this is kind of where I see myself at the beginning. A lot of people are going to ask, why am I not specced into Essence? Um, with the changes to rare mobs, I think Essences are going to be a lot more angry in the early game. You know, I don't want to spend 45 seconds killing an Essence when I could clear a map in three minutes, right? That's just not something I want to do right away. Um, I'm going to rely on Harvest and Betrayal to craft my initial set of gear and I know a lot of people are going to ask, but what about the body armor? For the body armor, we use Loathing Essence. You actually don't need the Loathing Essence craft until you are ready for the Aegis or Aegis Melding Swap, which is typically not day one of the league. Typically, that's like a bit further down the line. Aegis is going to be very expensive this league, I imagine. So Essence should not really be a top priority for me unless that's something... Well, and in general for you, unless that's what you want to do, right? You can always kill essences. It's not really a big deal. It'll just slow you down a lot. All right, that's pretty much about it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned a little bit. I always get a little bit anxious to release content like this because I don't want all of my content to be held to the same tier of like righteous fire with an entire Wikipedia, right? It's it's kind of a little bit scary for me to make content like this. I don't want to like clickbait any of my viewers to like, Oh, well, Pox made this. Surely it'll be good. Let me just go ahead and follow it. So remember, if you are ever hesitant on following anything that I make, with the exception of RF, go check out all the other content creators. Go see what they're doing. See, you know, see if that's maybe something a little bit up your alley instead, right? Um, I put a big emphasis on fun with the way I like to play uh, and things for my own personal enjoyment. So, like, I will not go out of my way to make currency doing something I don't like. Um, I will instead rather do something I do like play longer and then make the currency back, right? That's my philosophy. And that cannot be applied to everyone, right? But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, for people who are interested in filters, I will have a filter up probably an hour or two before the league goes live. Uh, I'll be going live a little bit after this video. I just gotta go take a shower. So with that being said, take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Mondays at twitch.tv slash pox. However, I am streaming Monday for this release. Take care, everybody.